Hey all, here are OS Reviews. Today we're taking a quick look at the Loran N2. This is a dedicated MP3 player or DAP that is running on Android. Now these are definitely a dying breed as most folks will just use their smartphones, acting double duty for playing music or streaming. But there are still a couple of reasons why you may want to consider a dedicated device for once it retains the headphone jack along with expandable storage via a micro SD card slot plus support for lossless audio codecs like FLAC and supposedly a higher-end DAC than on many smartphones should ensure a higher quality music playing experience. This thing is technically using an octa-core processor from MediaTek. Not that that really matters considering it's still a very basic media player at the end of the day. It does have built-in Wi-Fi though in addition to support for Bluetooth 5.0 so in case you want to use wireless headphones or buds you can still connect to it although that kind of defeats the purpose of a hi-fi mp3 player because you get the highest quality using the wired connection. 5000 mAh capacity built-in battery will play back music continuously for upwards of 60 hours. Otherwise, this thing will retail for around $90 or so, often going on sale, so it's not too bad. There are 32 gigs of built-in storage, which again isn't a ton, but you can augment that up to 1 TB using the micro SD card slot. Other packaging accessories include an extra film screen protector, one is already pre-installed, there's also a quick user guide, and aside from the 32 gigs of built-in storage, there's an extra 64 gigabyte micro SD card pre-included in the box. There's a bundled 3.5 millimeter pair of earphones, although these are pretty cheap and kind of Apple AirPod inspired. Again, if you are someone that is willing to get a dedicated device for music playback, you'll often have high higher quality headphones already that you would want to use. The Type-C standard USB charging and sync cable. You also get an interesting Type-C to USB Type-A adapter, so you can maybe read back some thumb drives directly on the player using OTG. A pretty neat extra, but that's all you get in the box. Uh, there is no additional case, for instance. And the 5-inch display is using a regular 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It is IPS LCD, so viewing angles are pretty decent, although at 720p or HD resolution, it's not going to be quite as high in terms of PPI as more flagship-grade smartphones, for instance, but that's not really too problematic, I'd say, since you're primarily just using this thing for music listening. The player does feel quite hefty and premium because of glass on the front and the back, plus a aluminum rail. Built-in speaker, microphone, along with the dual 3.5mm tracks so you can share a music track with a friend or family member and the volume rocker. These are all pretty tactile and responsive and easy to click on. Nothing else is on the very top. Again, a very boxy rectangular shape. Although it is a bit of a fingerprint magnet and obviously glass is going to be more fragile than something like metal or plastic for instance. Let's take a quick size comparison. This is the PS5 that we checked out a couple of months back, and it has pretty similar hardware internals. So it's really just the shell that's different. This one just feels a little bit more robust with those sharper edges. And then this was the G5 that we also reviewed pretty recently, which has comparable dimensions, but the G5 has a TN panel. So the viewing angles on the screen are inferior to this model that has the IPS screen. And then there have also been smaller players that we've checked out recently also running on Android, often with a 4-inch screen or a 3.5-inch screen, the M4, and then this one here from Mi Chen. These models are either made entirely out of plastic or have only one headphone jack, but have a similar concept, just of course a much smaller form factor. But that may or may not be a disadvantage. If you want something more portable, this actually might be something you want to check out, uh, versus having a slightly larger screen closer to a modern-day smartphone. But at at the same time, it will also take up a little bit more space. There is a pretty heavy skin on top of Android that goes with that whole black and gold theme, more so than any of the previous models that we've seen, in fact. And I do like it. It makes it feel, I think, a little bit more premium, again, than the price would imply. Of course, if you don't like this particular wallpaper, you can always customize it further since it is running on just regular Android. Not the brightest screen in the world, but definitely quite vibrant for an LCD, and again, good viewing angles for what it is, so really not bad. There is a built-in sound recorder using the microphone at the bottom here, so you can record voice memos and notes as well. Of course, this player does not have a built-in camera, like many of the other newer dApps on the market, so you can't use it for selfies or video conferencing. A basic calculator, though, can be found, and all these utility tools are more or less stock Android, so you don't find too much extra customization going on top. It's just the icon pack that has been slightly modified. It is worth mentioning that there is no Google Play Store pre-installed on this particular player, so you aren't able to directly 
sign in with your Google account and get extra apps from there, but it does support APKs. So you can go into the browser or you can transfer any files over from a computer or again a thumb drive and it can install any standard Android app. And I think that decision is primarily to prevent you from installing too many programs since the hardware is still a little bit more limited and keeping things light will ensure that the OS feels more responsive and you're using it just for the basic purposes as intended. Down below here, there are four programs that will always be pinned, allowing you to access the built-in music player, file manager, there's a basic text reader, but it's not as good as something like a Kindle, of course, since it still is a color screen at the end of the day versus e-ink, but you also get an FM radio, which you can trigger once you have headphones plugged in, acting as the antenna. And then from here, the top, you can also drag down for your standard Android shortcuts for things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, there is a built-in accelerometer, reaffirming that it's running on that MediaTek 6753 octa-core chipset, which is also aided, by the way, with 3 gigabytes of built-in RAM. In this day and age, those specs, of course, don't seem like anything outstanding, but if you are just really limiting yourself to the built-in apps, maybe one or two additional ones that you want to add, and just listening to music, it should still be more than sufficient. Like most MP3 players, though, there are no additional biometrics in terms of fingerprint scanners, although you can always add a pin. Moving into the music playback experience, we have three applications built on in, either the native music app, or you can choose between hi -Bi Music and AIMP. All three of these are able to play back MP3, WMAs, FLAC. The built-in one, I would say it's the most boring out of the three in terms of the UI. It's just a little bit more generic, but definitely does the job if you want something simple. My personal favorites though are the AIMP and hi -Bi Music apps, which do have more gesture support and customization going on, allowing you to change things like EQ control as well, and just are a little bit more fun to use. Here's the equivalent playback interface, and you can tell that it's just a little bit more sleek. The app here also allows you to more easily swipe between genre as well as artists for you to search between, and you can also swipe here from the edge to do things like import music wirelessly as well as change the way that the overall UI in terms of the skin looks. You can even change the equalizer yourself manually. There's also eight presets, including pop, blues, rock, metal, dance, so on and so forth, that you can also pick between. Even the colors and accents can be fully customized, very similar to modern day Android 12 or Android 13. In addition to support for more advanced plugins that will allow you to do tricks like spatial audio. So I do think there's a bit of redundancy here. I would personally have preferred if they just stuck with this particular app and maybe just got rid of that default one since there's nothing that that one does, I think, better than this one, to be completely honest. Uh, but it is what it is. There are a couple of options for you to choose between. What's also neat is the hi -Bi app will color code FLAC or lossless audio tracks using this yellow icon there at the bottom, so you can more easily distinguish. Now, aside from this hi -Bi music app, there's also the AIMP app. I think it's a slight step up compared to that default Android MP3 player app, but it's not quite as advanced as the hi -Bi app either. There's no support for plugins, but you do get EQ controls. The interface is also a little bit more simplified, so it's more of a middle ground between those two other options. It also drives studio style headphones really without any issues and you are able to discern a ton of detail, especially if you are, again, listening to a higher bit rate, flack, lossless resolution track. Nuances in the instrumentals that would often just be lost if you're listening to a regular mp3 using Bluetooth, for instance, because the sound has to be compressed to be sent wirelessly. By the way, the Bluetooth codecs that it supports, though, are just the regular SBC AAC. In the audiophile world, you can definitely pay more for even higher quality players and equipment in general. It, the waters in this niche category can go quite deep, so you can, of course, spend hundreds more to get even even better sounding headphones with added detail, but of course it becomes kind of a balancing act. What is good enough for the average user versus going after the extreme end and the highest quality possible. So I would say this strikes a pretty good compromise in terms of offering very good sound quality, a step up compared to really low cost budget MP3 players without breaking the bank. And the built-in web browser here is standard to Android, but you can also use this to search up something very quickly. For example, if we wanna read back the news, this is not gonna be the fastest performer in the world, but if you do wanna search something up in a pinch, it will do the job, supports multi-touch gestures as well, as you can see there. 
Here's also a quick demo of playing back a YouTube audio clip, which again, you are able to do either using the built-in browser or installing the YouTube app. And here's also what the built-in speakers, by the way, sound like. So some impressions there being that it does come out from the bottom of the unit. It's not really a stereo set that comes out from the top, but it doesn't get too easily muffled, which is good. Also doesn't sound as tinny as expected either, so not bad. But again, for a dedicated MP3 player, in most cases you will be plugging in better quality headphones anyways. This is just to be used in a pinch. Again, screen quality, not bad for just a basic mp3 player, especially one in the budget price range, and you get a good idea here of the viewing angles and colors that this thing is capable of displaying, playing some very limited basic games, although it's not really meant for that. You can sideload something like Angry Birds or Stack and get away with it. Anything more powerful though, it's not going to be the best experience. Primarily designed for clean audio output, and then also a nice enough screen for showing some cover art information. So that's been the Loran N2 digital MP3 player, and I would say it's nothing completely new compared to some of the other dedicated dApps that we've been seeing recently, all running on Android and just offering a little bit more advanced functionality compared to past players in this price range, which is good. This model in particular has a decent enough display, good performance when it comes to music playback, and perhaps the real differentiator is it's just the aesthetic being crafted out of a more boxy shape that feels very solid, having that dual headphone jack output. Don't expect it to have the most powerful performance in the world, but for basic streaming and music playback, it can handle all those tasks with ease. Overall, I think it's a pretty attractive entry-level DAP here in 2023. You can learn additional details if interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Loran N2.